our next conversation is going to be about um, you know something and i told you what it's called migodi Migodi. I thought he was actually making it up. <laughs> I can just make up words. And because I Migodi, don't know, you just mines. tell me that's what it okay. is. <laughs> Mining is biz- big business in this country, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, and there is a lot of money being made. And uh, there are regulations in place and there are laws in place. In fact, there is a ministry in charge of mining. Blue economy. So if it's mining is Migodi, blue economy is what? What's blue in Kiswahili? <laughs> Some, something samawati. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, it is uchumi samawati. Uh-huh. <laughs> and maritime affairs. Mambo ya maji. Mambo ya maji. Our guest <clears throat> is the chairman of the Kenya Chamber of Mines. He is the Dr. Kanyoro Patrick. Dr. good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the hot seat of the situation. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for having me here this morning. Good to have you here. Yeah. Uh, I think we're going to learn a lot this morning about mining in this country. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm going to welcome you with the day's proverb. Our mm. colleague City is away this week. Yeah. He has taken a couple of uh, days to relax. Yes. And so I'm going to give you the day's proverb. This week, the proverbs are from Libya. Okay. Uh, listen to the proverb. And then you'll give us your interpretation of it. The small donkey is the one that everybody rides. The small donkey is the one that everybody rides. What yes. do you think the Libyans are saying? What the Libyans are saying, in my own thought, mm-hmm. is that um, normally it is um, that person uh, that is available. Uh, that carries most of the burdens because a donkey basically carries burdens mm. and therefore uh, if it is small uh, it is not as difficult perhaps to manage as the big one and therefore would be asked to do much more mm-hmm. yes but I generally see these as um, the people who are simple those who are humble will definitely normally be given more tasks by the community yeah. yes so the lesson here is don't be humble yeah. <laughs> you'll be misused, you'll be misused. Yeah. <laughs> right <laughs> yes okay um introduce us to the kenya chamber of mines what is it uh, thank you very much uh the kenya chamber of mines is a non-profit organization is a membership organization that was founded in 1999 and the basic reason for having the kenya chamber of mines is um to do uh, basically three things. Mm. Number one is advocacy, because um, the people in the mining sector, or those who are in the business of mining, need to lobby for a business-friendly environment. We also advocate for a policy that allows people to do the business, not just the business, because remember there is the business, but there is also support for the mining communities. And uh, besides that, there is the most important one, and I think that's why I'm seated here, to create awareness about the possibilities and opportunities in the mining sector Mm -hmm. and of course offer training Mm -hmm. because we also go out there and engage those who are in the sector Mm -hmm. it's a membership uh, organization yes how many members do you have we have around about 385 members Mm -hmm. uh but um that is still a drop in the ocean Mm -hmm. given that we have um (coughs) well over 500,000 people involved in mining one way or the other. Mm. Yes. Who makes up this membership? Uh, individuals, communities, businesses? Thank you very much. Mm. B- uh, most members are people who are doing prospecting and, and prospecting is that aspect of looking for minerals. Mm-hmm. We also have people who are in actual mining. Mm-hmm. We also have people who are in mineral processing. Mm-hmm. We also have uh, professionals who are supporting the mining sector Mm -hmm. and among the professionals uh, the most common professionals in this space are the geologists Mm -hmm. we have the mining engineers we have the lawyers we have the accountants we have the surveyors yes and um, it would be important also to mention that now uh, in this uh, dispensation we also have members of cooperative societies so Mm -hmm. they are also coming in to join the chamber okay yes all right yeah in the practice, then, I mean, if, we, if we're getting into that and looking at, so there's members who are, or obviously members of the association, then bleed into the wider operation of mining um, um, in the country. 
right? Mm. So what areas do you look at and in terms of what they do, specifically when it comes to the resources that are available in Kenya? Uh, that is uh, quite a wide question. Mm -hmm. But generally, uh, what, what, what um, we look at, if I got your question right, is that first of all, for you to become a member, you must be able to demonstrate that indeed you are in that space. Mm -hmm. Then uh, in terms of... Um, how that gets across to um, how we permit the, 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 um, the society in terms of our members mm -hmm. is that um, we have members in different categories. Mm -hmm. And the members in the different categories uh, have a responsibility to um, not only uh, articulate the issues, but see how that integrates with the communities in which they carry out the mining. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. Let me ask you a more broader question then. Yes. What is mining? Thank you very much. Uh, mining in a very broad sense mm -hmm. is the act of extracting resources from the ground. That is a very basic uh, definition of mining. Extracting resources, resources from the ground. Resources from the ground. Mm -hmm. That means that... Um, one will either be looking for uh, material, for example, mm -hmm. for construction, and what is commonly known as quarrying. If yeah. you talk about quarries, mm -hmm. that is basically mining, and I think that's the very starting point. Mm. Uh, but besides that, you also talk about uh, ex uh, you know extracting um, crays like we use for tiles. You know the cow what we call the kaorin mm. and, and and such material. Uh, you could also uh, go beyond, then uh, leave those uh, minerals, for example, limestone, and I've talked about quarrying uh, for ballast for for the building stone mm. or dimension st uh, stone, so to speak. Mm. Uh, and that is the space that a lot of people still do not recognize as mining. Yeah. Because when we talk about mining in this country, people think quickly about gold, people think about gemstones, mm -hmm. people yep. just think about those high-value minerals. And the truth and the reality is that the minerals I'd mentioned there before are what we call the development minerals. Mm. And the development minerals have even a higher impact on the lives of, of, you know, of the citizens than perhaps that small band of... Um, the precious metals and precious stones. Okay. Yes. So this one's kina quarry and uh, getting of ballast and all, that's mining. It is mining. Sand harvesting, is it mining? Sand harvesting is mining. Eh. Yes. So just mm. uh, uh, relative to put uh, this matter in perspective, mm. the world is such that what you do not get from the farm, you must get from the mine. Mm -hmm. and, and, and perhaps this is where we now need to start this conversation just to demonstrate how uh, important mining is mm. to this country mm -hmm. and actually to, the, to humanity. Right. Yes. So um, you talk about the opportunities and the possibilities of what mining can actually present for Kenya. Yes. Um, and we also know that Afri the wider Africa is so resource rich. Yes. And that in terms of what is available, probably it's undiscovered. So if you were to give an overview of what probably is available in Kenya that has not been resourced yet in the mining world, what are we looking at? Uh, that's quite some task, <laughs> but I will uh, make an attempt just to, first of all, uh, create context. Uh, Africa uh, contributes well over 30% of the minerals that the world uses. Mm -hmm. Africa produces that. Now, if you look at Kenya and where we are located geologically, you'll find that down from, uh, you know, Migori, the counties bordering uh, Tanzania, mm -hmm. all the way up to Trukana that borders Uganda, Sudan, and uh, Ethiopia, you know, in mm. the north. Mm. The entire belt is well resourced in different minerals. But the most notable one is, of course, gold. Mm -hmm. But we also have many, many minerals in that space. So to come back to your question, the, the biggest challenge we have, and I think that's where our homework ought to start, mm. is just to give you, to take you back to history, uh, the first uh, minerals in this country, I think, were traced in 1893 mm -hmm. in Narrow County. That is Rolgorian, where even today mm. 
there's a lot of gold mining. Mm -hmm. uh, sometime back in 1922-23, there was a gold rush in Western Kenya. That's a, a, about, a, I mean, that's a hundred years, years, years ago. ago yes. Yeah. But we have still not gained traction in this sector impacting this economy. Why? Good. That is a question of, uh, again, uh, it, it, it has many reasons. Number one reason, most of us, when we went to school, uh, we were made to believe or, or some or the curriculum was skewed. And I think it is still skewed toward that direction. Mm. That Kenya is not a resource uh, rich. I mean, it's not a resource it's rich. It's not a mineral rich country. country. Exactly. Is it? And it is. Kenya is I, a mineral rich country. It is a mineral rich country. Mm. Just by, by by virtue of where we are located geologically. And, and just to bring uh, this you know, point home. And, and, uh, hold on, hold on. Okay. Yes. You know, when we think minerals, yes. go DRC. That's right. They are not far from us. Yeah. Look at, uh, you know, Uganda. Uganda. Uh, Tanzania have minerals, Correct. right? Yeah. So that means because we're in this proximity, we are as rich as almost these guys could be. Yes. And we have one advantage. We have enjoyed political stability since independence. So someone explained to me, why so, have we not? And I think that's my issue here. <laughs> why have we not have tapped to, into this? Yeah, we have to ask, why have you not tapped into it? Because <laughs> if you want to do a geographical spin, mm. uh, just to walk in your head, we we'll look at some of the countries to the south of Kenya, yes. uh, Botswana being one of them, Thank you. which for a large number of its 5 million strong population, mm. people have made money, people have established livelihoods yes. off the, the diamonds. Yes right yes. the current president has been so forward thinking to say that this whole business of external parties coming in mining our mm. diamonds and taking them away has to come to an end if you're going to come and mine we're going to be um, very you know categorical about it that we will share um, and the majority of it will come to us we're looking at that happening in South Africa with the diamonds and the gold. We look at that, well, maybe to a, a lower extent in Ghana um, with the gold as well. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, no, we, we can't talk about DR Congo because they're still being manipulated to the hilt when yes. it comes to their resources. Mm -hmm. But why are we able to see that there's, there is some um, leadership which leans on understanding how mineral rich you are and actually making sure that something is done with it? If that truly is the case, that is so much in terms of wealth, why is it not being leveraged on? My, my quick uh, take on this is, um, is a cocktail of answers. Mm. Number one, I think the curriculum has been skewed in a way that all of us as we were brought up and as we went to school, mm. we've been made to believe that there are no mira minerals in this country. And I think that is something that needs to change. Mm. Number two, just to uh, put this matter in perspective, I've talked about the 1893, the 1922, the 1935, some copper mining in, in Migori County, what were, what were called the Makalda mines and which mines are still there today. Mm. Um, the mines in Kakamega, uh, the gold mines. Now, all that was done. Remember, the let me call it the Department of Mining in this country was yeah. established by the colonial government in 1933. Yeah. And what happened when it was set up in 1933? Mm. Uh, thereafter, we got the Mining Act, CAP 306, 1940. Mm -hmm. Now, the Mining Act, done in 1940, mm. lent the sector all uh, gave direction to the sector until 2016 <laughs> that is 76 years <laughs> same law same law for 76 years no amendments well i am not aware of any amendments there perhaps could have been some amendments mm. but what we are looking at is look at a span of 76 years and the opportunity is lost mm. why opportunity is lost this act was done by mzungu who had no interest in, in, in the, you know, in Kenyans. Mm. And therefore, even when we became an independent nation, we still didn't see it as an urgent, you know, matter to address those issues there. But uh, we are grateful that in 2016, we were able to change the law. We now have what we call the Mining Act 2016. Mm. And I'm happy to say that even after eight years of 
you know, running with the Mining Act 2016, um, there is an amendment bill in Parliament as we sit here, mm -hmm. and, and it looks at enhancing the regulatory environment so that then, the, the legal framework, so that then we have a better uh, area to operate in. I want to come back here. You're yes. saying Kenya is mineral rich. Yes. Has there been any study done by government to establish the extent of our mineral wealth? I will say this, that um, if you go back to the library, there are reports that again, I, I do know that I have one that date back to 1935. And therefore, since 19th, actually since 1930s, mm -hmm. we have many reports by the colonial government and we have many reports by um, the current government. Then we have many, many reports submitted by the prospecting companies. Because mm -hmm. if I'm a prospecting company and I'm working in the field, then the findings I find, I mean, I get when I do my work, mm -hmm. I ought to file them mm -hmm. with the Directorate of Mines. Mm -hmm. Means we have those records. But more importantly, in terms of a deliberate government action, I think two, three years ago, we did the, the airborne geophysical survey. Mm -hmm. And um, the unfortunate bit is that, yes, the survey was done, uh, of course, using taxpayers' money, mm. uh, but the report has not been released uh, to the sector prayers and to the citizens. Let's do it. Let's, Since what let, year? Sorry, I'm let's, sorry. Let's spend some time there. Go I, back. I think that mm -hmm. was completed last year. Okay. So, it was who conducted the, the survey? The survey was, of course, conducted by the government of Kenya. Uh -huh. Yes. You said it's air, airborne geological yes. survey. Yes. How was that conducted? Uh, in terms of um, the, the survey yeah, was... What, what do they do? What, 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 what this means is that um, you get... Um, you get an equipment, an equipment, I mean, an, an aeroplane, of course, it's fixed with the appropriate uh, tools and equipment. Yep. And the essence is for it to be able to detect and map the anomalies. Anomalies uh, is just saying that, yes, here we can detect or sense, so to speak, mm -hmm. a particular uh, element. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that, that was done. When you say it's the government of Kenya, yes. it's officers from the Ministry of Mining. The, 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 was it our geologists? This uh, thing was done by, um, I think it was a multi-agency team. It, it is a combination of, of guys from different departments. But uh, I do recall initially it was supposed to be done by uh, a Chinese entity. Mm. But um, I'm, I'm told for security reasons, it was deemed fit that it would be done by uh, a Kenya security team together with professionals in the space okay yes so kenya security yes plus our geologists and other experts oh yes on these are the ones who did the, the survey yes that's what? the information i have i still cannot validate this because i haven't seen the you know i haven't read the report but uh, that is the info i have ordinarily how long would it take to compile the report uh or in their plans as much as you know yes what was the plan we do the survey from this point to this point. Yes. We complete the, you know, airborne survey at this point. Yes. We retreat to make a report. When should the report have been ready? Ideally. And what ought to happen anywhere? Even because the same things are done by private companies. Mm -hmm. I mean, elsewhere. Even in this country, I know. I think I know about two companies that have previously done this. Just like you've said, you, you do the survey. Once you've done that, you sit and compile the report, and then you release the report. So, uh, I do not want to read anything into it, but what I would want to say as a stakeholder in the sector is that it is important that the report is released to the sector prayers, not just to the sector prayers, to all Kenyans, because Kenyans are entitled to that information, yep. so that then they can make some decisions on this is the report. I've looked at it. I see an opportunity here. I can invest here or I can advise someone to, to, you invest. Know, to invest here. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before this particular survey, mm. what was the previous survey? When was the previous survey done by government of Kenya? So what's the latest official report on our mineral wealth? I will say that um, ordinarily there will be annual reports from the Directorate of Mines. Uh, but largely I will say that they are not 
basically for public consumption. You will not find them, then they are published. What we normally get are uh, just some snippets into the info that is flowing in there. Mm. Which, of course, you get from the, you know, like the, the every year we have the annual, annual economic survey, mm. then you are able to see that this year we exported uh, so many kilograms of, of this material, so many tons of, of copper, of iron ore, uh, that kind of information. That tells us what we've already extracted. Mm. Come again? That tells us what we've extracted. Yes. In terms of our potential... Yes. We do not have... In terms of our potential, we have not done anything. I, I think uh, we have not done... Let me not say we've not done anything, but we've not done much. And let me just put this clearly mm. uh, so that uh, it is clear to us. For example, if you are exploring or you want to establish the deposit available in this room where we are sitting, mm -hmm. what you ought to do is to drill to get an idea of... You know, you've already earmarked yeah. that, yes, there is a potential for a resource in this room. Yeah. You ought to drill so that then you are able to get a feel of the depth it's, yeah. of what, what is available, of, or, you know. Uh, mm. And then you are able to extrapolate that and see then how many tons of resource X am I likely to get from mm -hmm these random mass. Yeah. So, uh, to be honest, that we have not done in any comprehensive way. Oh, okay. Yes. Our guest this morning is Dr. Kanyoro Patrick. Dr. Kanyoro is the chairman of the Kenya Chamber of Mines. He's here to tell us about the mining sector in the country, the potential, the ups, the downs, the challenges that they're faced uh, by the players in this sector. The mining chamber, the Kenya Chamber of Mines brings together members who are basically playing in the entire value chain from prospecting to mining to processing uh, professionals in the sector to those that export, those that make the money and uh, of course even some some those that have worked in the regulatory agencies mm. also yeah. uh, come in. Sunil? Yes. You know it's usually when we look at potential because I'm, I'm looking at the side of the economy here mm. and there's always the, the push to say you know we need to be able to do more save here you know the CS Treasury is already trying to pull what little hair he has out to say look how are we going to be able to make this money and then here you are telling us that you know <laughs> there are huge resources underground literally underground that Kenya is not taking advantage of. So I'm still trying to make the connection between you have this, not taking advantage of it, and you need it here on this other side. Why don't we make that connection? Uh, thank you very much. And uh, specifically, I like the way you've started that conversation. Uh, you know, CS Treasury is looking for money to run this economy. Mm -hmm. And, and, and um, this sector has the potential. I don't want to over promise Kenyans mm. but this sector has the potential not just to make substantial contribution to the well-being of Kenyans but perhaps also has the potential to deal with this debt crisis that we have mm. just for uh, to give you a simple example mm -hmm. um, the Kenya government uh, uh, in I think two years ago imposed a duty on iron ore of $175 per ton mm -hmm. Technically, what does that mean? What does that mean? That's that what I want. To, that thing. that <laughs> is what I want to talk about. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Now, when you talk about a duty of export, um, I mean an exp, uh, you are charging one seventy five dollars per ton. Mm. When I export my iron ore, you are simply saying that you have uh, behind the doors locked that door. I cannot. Export. I cannot export. Mm. Why can I not export? Because the world market is about a hundred to one ten dollars per ton. In fact, now I think it's about ninety. That's how much people are buying. Yes, I mean if I market. get it to the world market, I'll earn ninety dollars per ton. Okay. This government is asking me to pay one seventy five dollars in order to export. In order to export into that market. So, that's so, a so loss. quick map. It's a loss. So you're going to come Even in before I extract that iron ore, you're in the negative. It's too exactly. exactly. Yeah. But, but let me paint the, the, the picture so that you understand what uh, perhaps this is. Mm. If you look at the statistics, just before that ban was imposed, mm. or rather the tax was imposed, mm. eh, the iron ore exports were earning this economy about $8 million. Per year. Yes. Uh -huh. So just to put it in uh, perspective, mm. it means that uh, the honorable body mm. would be 
sitting in his office and putting eight million dollars just from I don't know if that ban were not there and holding all other factors constant. Uh, just let that sink. Why, why would do you, you think? Want to why, why was, <laughs> why was <laughs> this imposed? There are many reasons yep. that um, different people have given, depending on the side in which they sit. Okay. One of the reasons, and, and it sounds quite logical, is that we want to build an eye on, you know, the steel industry in this country. Yeah. Sounds very logical. Stop because exporting it is raw material. Stop, exactly. Let's process it here. Correct. And then we become... Yeah, 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 and and uh, from that angle, that makes a lot of sense. Makes Patrick. good sense. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 a good thing. Mm. We are good stewards mm. if we are walking that direction. Mm. But the next question I ask is, yes, uh, so how many people are doing that? Your guess is as good as mine. I don't think there are more than two. There are and two, two investors so far. Yeah, we have had two investors. Yes, and this is even after sixty years of independence. Correct. Two investors were able to convert iron ore locally yes. Yes. into steel. Correct. Why have there been no more investors? That we have so much ore that we are exporting. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, we have a bit of a problem because I think, uh, one, just to get into detail, if you're looking at iron ore, there are about two types of iron ore. Mm -hmm. There's what you call the hematite and there's the magnetite. Now, uh, what has been happening and in many, many places is that there has been more use of hematite mm. and Kenya's deposits for hematite are not very well established. Mm -hmm. So what we have is the magnetite, the magnetic, so to speak, type of iron ore. Mm -hmm. And even the people today processing have very, uh, don't have the capacity for magnetite. So we are saying we've imposed the $175 per ton, but still the... Rocco, in I mean, there are those who have invested in the sector still cannot uptake what we have. So that means that they that woman in Taita Taveta, mm. that woman in Kitui, in Ikuda, that is Kitui County, that woman in Kendu Bay, who relies on putting together a hundred or fifty kilos of iron ore just by you know just by picking it because mm. it's possible now stays without an income. Why are these local uh, processors not able to take up our magnetite? It is just the, 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 the type of equipment they have. It so cannot process magnetite. So we need to have that honest conversation. If we cannot process magnetite, why can't we open the window? And, and I want to address this to CS Treasury, mm -hmm. because I think, and, and allow me to, to go there. Please do. The, the Finance Act, that came down at least had that one promise mm. for the mining sector because there was a deliberate proposal in that um finance in, the, bill. in the finance bill 2024 mm. to reverse that position so that kenyans who are mining a magnetite would get a livelihood. but now we all know that the bill came and down and therefore that is not there. So for me, when the Honorable Bandy talks about some areas that he may want to revisit in the finance bill, uh, I would want to encourage him for the good of this sector to revisit that specific Okay, space. Patrick. Yes. Let's come back into the logic. Yes. What do we need to do so that we stop exporting our raw material? So that <laughs> this woman in Taita Taveta, yes. in Kendu Bay, yes. in Ikuda, yes. when she collects yes. 50 kilos of iron yes. ore, she knows that yes. that is going to a local... Uh, processor there yes. and it will be steel mm. that can be used locally or that we can export thank you very much i think um, we need to open up this space open up this space first of all one of the biggest challenges we have today is the issuance of permits and licenses just to make this clear mm. if you don't have a mining permit if you don't have a mining license then technically or according to the law, then you are called an illegal miner. Okay. Because you are doing a business for which you are not licensed. Wait. So the woman we are talking about in Kendu Bay needs a license? Yes. And, and, and that is uh, where we now need to start getting to the <coughs> bottom of this. Because what? <laughs> <laughs> we are saying... Yes, yes. That is what the law so, provides no, for. So, I'm so, sorry. <laughs> yes. Most likely, this woman who is mining is mining on her land. 
Thank you. Yes, that Isn't is it? yes. It, it is. It is community land. It's ancestral mm. land. It's family land. At the end of the day, it's her land. Mm. But essentially, what we're saying is that the resource that is in this land belongs to the state. Yes. Okay. That's by law. By yes. law. Mm. Again, yes. But she still requires a license to mine this thing which is in her land, which she's essentially going to sell to the state anyway. Mm. Or oh, not necessarily. Not, well, not necessarily. Uh, not but we're necessarily. saying she needs a license to yes. be able to bring it out. What she does with it at the end of the day is up to her. But she needs a license. To I think be it able makes sense. Withdraw it. If belong if it belongs to the state, yeah. then the state ought to know yes. that you're doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's the issue here? Is it that it's difficult to get a license? Now, just to uh, to address that, eh? mm. I think this is our starting point. And I want to say here that yesterday we had a meeting with the, the, the CS and um, we want to believe and trust the pledge and promise he has made to industry <laughs> that he is really going to work hard to make sure that we get licenses and that our people get permits so that we can do business. I want you to understand this. You get an order, for example, mm -hmm. you know, from a company Y. Mm -hmm. I don't want to mention the companies here. Mm. Then they tell you, give us one or two hundred tons of iron, iron ore, mm -hmm. or of bauxite. Mm -hmm. okay. Bauxite is the ore from which we get aluminium. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it is iron ore or bauxite, the company giving you the order mm -hmm. will insist that you must uh, have your paperwork right. Of mm -hmm. course. So if now you are buying from her and you do not, she does she not have, have the papers, it means you've lost your business. It is, it is that complicated. Okay. So we are trusting that um, uh, the, the Honorable uh, Joho, our, our, our minister, mm. will do what he promised. And we trust Which him. Which is what? To expedite issuance of licenses and permits so that people can do business. So those people who are basically just, you know, mining by hand, yes, those ones need a license. The, the right. law is such that yeah. those who are mining by hand, eh, yeah. let's, let's call them the name the law, the law calls them. Yes. They are called artisanal miners. Artisanal mm -hmm. miners. Yes. So whether you are an artisanal miner, mm -hmm. you are a small scale miner, mm. you are a medium scale miner, or a large scale miner, you must have either, you must have for permits, they are for artisanal and small scale. Mm. But generally, anybody going from some size of small going to the large scales, license. you must have a license. Okay. That is the difference. Okay. Now, just to, just to also give uh, credit where it is due, the government has now operationalized a provision that is there in the mining law that talks about having artisanal mining committees at the county level. Okay. So now they are gazetted. And we believe that they will gain traction so that then they can consider the applications at the county level. Mm. And we believe that will expedite the process. I just want to go back a little bit because it seems as though there seems to be some work that's happening at cross purposes here. Because of the very same idea of imposing this ban of 100, no, imposing what? this uh, duty. duty of $175 duty. is to essentially protect the local industry. Right? Yeah, because mm -hmm. you're saying, let us... And promote. And promote yes. and protect the local industry. Yes. That's why you're saying, if you're going to export, we're going to make it very expensive for you. But we're going to keep it cheaper if you're keeping the ore or any other mineral, for example, in the country. Right? But it's the same government then that makes it very difficult for folks who want to get a license to mine the same thing in the country. How do you explain one to the other? Here is a, a, a duty or a levy imposed on this thing so that you can promote local industry, but the very promotion of local industry is vested in the ability of citizens to run the business. How, how, how can we... <laughs> I'm very confused. I, 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 I hear you and I understand where you're coming from because that is something that is a problem to all of us to understand. Because you must walk the talk, you know, uh, being, um, how do I want to put it? I, I really want to be modest, but uh, as policy makers, <laughs> we must walk the talk. <laughs> This is a safe space. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
and 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 the point i want to make is this mm. eh? just so that we get it clearly mm. Mm. when you impose this 175 uh, dollars per ton then the, what i would imagine to create a level playing field mm -hmm. is that then you would also not allow whoever is bringing in uh, material from uh, from outside the country to just bring it again for free because what does that mean you are missing your opportunity oh, so the raw material from elsewhere can come in yes we are getting it here. But our raw material cannot go out. Yes. All right. You know, those those are the Very things good. that Very I good. think uh, policy mm. makers And that seems to, to make address. sense to somebody somewhere. It makes a lot. And, and, and that is why I think um, we need to engage different departments. And let me say, the Kenya Chamber of Mines has is not just engaging the State Department of Mining on this matter, because we know it cuts across other departments. Mm -hmm. That's why we are reaching out to Treasury. We've had conversations <coughs> with the State Department of Industrialization, industrialization yep. the State Department uh, for Investments. Why? Because we want there to be harmony, and so that the issues we are talking about here can be addressed. Uh, so the biggest enemy to this progress is government itself, because there's so many departments <coughs> that are working in this thing. It's a monolith that's government to say that stop working in silos, but speak to each other so that you can make it. Because the people who impose the licenses, mm. uh, rather people who 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 are, are giving out these licenses, are not necessarily the folks who are working in the mini in the Ministry of. Um, of of mining, mining and maritime affairs and uh, blue economy mm. the people who are working on licenses are working in another department so here we are saying that if we're looking at the economy at large then everybody has to plug in at one level or the other because we know that we can benefit here you can benefit here you can benefit here so this business of working in silos then just does not work exactly under that for example let me use the same case of I don't know. Mm -hmm. It is not just the, the the lady or the woman getting her I don't know in uh, Taita Taveta, Kishusha in Taita Taveta, mm -hmm. or Ikuda in Trukana and selling it. Remember, the the government itself, let me just even put it as it is, pattern of I don't know, the government adds up with forty two dollars pattern. Pattern. And, and and if there's somebody now if how is this, this if, is if the if revenue. the price is about a hundred dollars and the my government is taking forty two dollars, I believe it should be the first one on the table to support that business to keep going. Why do I say it makes forty two dollars? Mm -hmm. It has eight dollars from the hundred dollars on royalties. We have ten, eleven dollars to Kenya Ports Authority. We have um about twelve dollars on, on fuel. Yeah. You know, because I mean, uh, if I'm moving, I'm, I'm going to use uh, trailers and uh, trucks and all that. Mm. I mean, from the diesel they consume, there's money flowing to government. So, so I think um, we need to have a, a cohesive conversation where okay. everyone comes to the table so that then we do what is good for country. Let's talk about now the other side. Okay, yeah. so from the side of the players in the sector, yes. especially the bigger players, mm. there's a lot of money. From yes. government, eight million dollars, for example, in just this iron ore alone, mm -hmm. eight million dollars in revenues. That means this is a hundred of millions of dollars business. Yes, mm -hmm. is the woman in the Kuda feeling this hundreds of millions of dollars? Uh, she is. Are the local artisanal miners actually benefiting from the minerals and from the hard work that they put in this? I, I would, I would say first of all, I'll say yes and no. Let me let me put this matter in perspective. Mm. Okay. Uh, when we are looking at the large scales, the large scales operate in a way where they they pay royalties mm -hmm. for the minerals that they extract. <coughs> and when you pay royalties, the law is such that seventy percent will go to the national government. We'll find its way. In fact, we pay the the entire royalty to the State Department of Mining. 70% mm. of it will find its way to the National Treasury. 20% is supposed to find its way to the county government. You know, the county of origin. Okay. Oh, okay. So if I pick my staff, for example, from Migori County, 20% ought to go to Migori County. That's what the law provides for. Yep. Then 10%, now to get closer to your question, goes to the mining community. The community from which that mineral came from. Mm. <laughs> That's the law. That's what That's the, law, what the law provides for. Okay. Okay. And 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 I, and I want to say that um, 
there is in the last i think six seven months there's been deliberate effort to make that happen mm. we still have a bit of a challenge because i think again for us who are the traders mm. in minerals for example mm. if i get my copper from kitui and declare that my copper was from migori that's it i'm disenfranchising i mean Money i'm, I'm denying migori. the people of kitui what right for belongs to them they mm. are 20 percent for county and 10 percent for the community mm. so so i think um here ma much as we want to say just as government i think also as the actors in the industry we need to be more accountable more responsible so that we become good stewards of what has been put on our hands mm. yes. okay uh, before we leave, we have to ask this question because it's been there on social media recently. Mm. Oh, mining in the national parks. Yes. Oh, Kichini Chini. Oh, are they taking our minerals away? Clear the air. Thank you very much. Mm. I think, um, like you say, there has been a, a lot of information, and uh, particularly in the last two, three months. And I first want to say that KCM, or the Kenya Chamber of Mines, is having a deliberate effort. And, uh, and thank you very much, uh, Spice FM team, for having us here. Because this marks the beginning of our journey mm. to bring home the facts as they are. Now, the question of mining in the parks. I want to put it this way. That, indeed, mining has occurred in the parks, I think, since independence or prior to independence. But it is not mining occurring in that form I, I just want to be clear here mm -hmm. that one can go to kenya wildlife service and still get consent to mine in a national park because that provision is there mm -hmm. so so the 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 the, the, the picture being created like mining in the parks is 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 not it's acceptable by raw is a new thing it is not a new thing in fact, I think if uh, my memory serves me right, how the one of the best gemstones in the world, that is the Savorite, mm -hmm. the green garnet from uh, Taita Taveta. Yeah. I, I think we found it way back in, I think, 1967 or something, mm. right in the parks. I mean, so, so, so we cannot say that um, mining in the park is a problem. I think it's a question of how to manage or mitigate the issues of impact on the environment mm. and the coexistence of um, of wild drive with the, the people that work there. But also, we must say this, that, uh, well, and, and I think there's a conversation and His Excellency himself uh, has uh, accepted that uh, Kenyans can access part of the park and there is a task force that is looking at how to best do this without the human world drive conflict mm. or how best to manage this so so it is not it is not an offense it's not criminal okay mine in the park if it is done according to the law oh. i think it's good to so clarify it's not that. rumors that yes mining happens in the park it does it's not new yeah. mm -hmm. it has been happening in the park for very many years thank illegal. you and it is not illegal yes it happens if the kenya wildlife service has uh, uh, permitted yes Okay. Yes. Patrick, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Dr. Kanyoro Patrick is the chairman of the Kenya Chamber of Mines. He's been our guest this hour. Keep it here for more conversations coming up. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.